All right. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and record. And then uh, what we'll do is I'm going to jump in and kind of share this. Again, what we're looking at in this one is actually Mr. Mercury. And I'll show you where the section of all of these are. And once we're done with this demo, it will be fairly quick, I think. It doesn't have to be very lengthy. And I think I want to give you guys, again, time to play around with some of this. So this is Mr. Mercury. It's just one of these pre-built sections of the effects panel. And of course, you're probably familiar with the effects panel over here. We sort of effects and presets and you can search for things um, like, you know, wave, I think we used before or um, ripple is a good one that you can use or um, turbulent displace is a great one and turbulent noise are also great. I think this is how you can get that kind of um, old school TV fuzzy noise, you know, marching ants looking um, designs. So there's a lot of really fun ways that you can do this, but this is sort of more set up as if you know what you're looking for. And it's fast and great that way, but it's also not very easy to sort of navigate if you're trying to just explore things. And there's actually a whole nother section of effects. And let me just re-screen share my whole desktop here so you guys can see it. Um, and as, as you're working on this, what you can see here is if I actually have this section up here, which is effect, and I need something to apply the effect to for it to be there. So I'm gonna actually just delete this. This is just a 1920 by 1080 composition. I'm gonna go up to layer and choose a new solid, in which case it's just gonna be sort of a square that fills the screen. You need to put the effect on something. And a lot of them do require you to have some kind of a solid first. And I'm just using the blue color just because it's fun. If I choose effect, I can come down here into this section and you can actually explore them by section here a little bit easier, I think, than the presets. It's the same menus. I think it's the exact same stuff. Um, it just gives you a little bit more control over how you're gonna like explore those things. So effect here, here's your most recently used effect that you can reapply. And then the section that we're going to look around here in this one is simulation. And there's a lot of really fun ones to play around with in here. Um, particle worlds in here, snowfall, starburst, rainfall, all kinds of fun stuff that you can get into. Um, but they're really fine tunable and they have a lot of opportunity to be changed and edited along certain layers. So let's just play around with Mr. Mercury first because it's pretty fun. And again, this is the same one that I just applied. I had done nothing to it besides just apply the effect to sort of show you what happens. As you can tell, there's a lot going on here. But with most of these kinds of layers, again, if you want to animate things, it's going to happen under here, under effects. And here's Mr. Mercury. These are the same things that you can see up here in my effect controls, the exact same features. The advantage of doing this on the timeline is that you can actually animate things over time. However, I do like to sort of start up here in this section, this sort of effect controls first, and just play around with what I want to start with and see what you can kind of have happen within this particular um, design feature. So as I go through this, if I'm like, hey, this is cool, looks nice, let's just play around with some of these. So let's see how we can actually, here's a reset button. All the blue numbers are things that you can play around with. If I want to have an X radius, this is going to spread those bubbles out. In which case now they all come from sort of a center line. So now I've sort of created, I don't know, maybe a waterfall rather than like a faucet, if that makes sense for this particular kind of like water droplets. So this sort of looks like it's all coming out of the center point when this is low on the radius versus expanding the radius to include something that's very like wide or large. In which case, if I extreme this by a lot, you may be able to see some opportunities where you're having less of those objects included just by changing that one feature. Now there's other ways to have less included as well, but as a way to sort of explore these, I think playing around with these kind of features in combination with the different kinds of layers that you can put this on is gonna give you a lot of opportunity to sort of like play around with and change what some of these are. So X radius, I'm sure you can guess what the Y radius is going to do if I put it back to center. The Y radius is going to, again, make it go from the top. So still coming out from the center point, still flowing down and still slowly kind of disappearing as it appears and then slowly disappears as it gets smaller in scale. So you just have this kind of what's called a birth rate and a death rate of these particular uh, little blobs. And that's what's down here. So I'm gonna reset those just for now. Um, let's see what the producer is gonna choose the point at which it comes from, I believe. So you can actually move this around 
and animate that as well. So as we're animating this, this could also be something that I go down underneath effects in, and I can animate the producer. There's a stopwatch for literally all these features. So things that could change over time if you would like them to. Um, the direction is going to choose how it flows. So now you can see it's kind of like popping out a little bit. You can see it's kind of changing the, the spiral a little bit as if this is a three-dimensional environment. For me to be able to play around with let me put that producer back in the center and we'll just play around with this a little bit do you see what's happening here it's sort of rotating around in three-dimensional space and what's cool about this also is there's some lighting settings so down here in lighting and shading we'll get into a little bit where you can really stylize how you want this to look or feel um, and this again can be combined with putting things on path animations along path like stroke animations along path to make it look like there's kind of this fluid ink spill kind of a thing. And you can really fine tune this in a particular way, which is pretty satisfying and fun. Set that again. Velocity is a little bit how fast or how far it's going to travel. So as I'm increasing that, it's a little bit more of like, um, almost like a space effect, as if you're traveling forward while this is rain is falling or sort of looking up at the sky while rain is falling, a little bit too much blobs probably in the center here. But I think you could get that effect, really, even if you move this producer out of the way. Yeah, so a lot of opportunity there. The birth rate is going to add more of these. So again, birth and death rate, as you increase this, is going to add more blobs, which at a certain point is going to make it sort of just an amorphous shape rather than kind of this flow of water, necessarily. And you could theoretically clip these. So if you only want to have a certain shape as it's coming out from a direction, you know, it only exists within a certain frame. And then you can add these on uh, separate layers as well to sort of layer them up with some kind of a, um, a masking effect, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, longevity is how long they last, in which case, if I turn this way down, there's kind of a fun feature within this as well, where they're just going to kind of bubble out. Do you see how much different that is compared to what it was before? So again, I have a high birth rate, and now it's just kind of this, they're short-lived. I have lots of blobs, but they're short-lived. And so you just have this very undulating, three-dimensional-looking liquid form that could also be animated along a particular path or direction so that it seems like it goes somewhere, is forming somewhere. And as a three-dimensional layer, to be able to be able to animate this in really not a lot of time with something that's this complex and pre-built and sort of fine-tuning these edits, um, you're going to be able to have a lot of really interesting things that you can use in your arsenal when you're trying to create motion on the screen. And again, this might be something that could be um, tied to music or tied to a beat drop or some kind of transition within your frames so that you can use this as kind of like a wipe or something. So, um, you know, the size or scale of this can be really pretty fun to also use with this. So now we almost have this like cooking pan looking, you know, cooking oil pan kind of looking thing on the screen. Versus if I spread this out way crazy, it's just like little dancing appearing droplets. I don't know what you would even call that. Right, so there's a lot of fine tuneness to this. Now, because these effects have been around for a while, this um, kind of simulation effect, if you're just straight up using it as is, um, people who are motion designers are gonna kind of know, right? But if you're finding a really creative use for this in combination with some other layer styles, gradient effects, uh, blending modes, being able to layer things up in hard cuts um, to be able to set to music, I think you're gonna be able to find that this is a really versatile tool so that you can have a lot of opportunity within. So I really like this longevity. I think this one is really fun to play with if you want them to last a long time while being very, very tiny. Coming out from a really tiny point. Let's try that. We'll just change these to one real quick. And let's see if we can get this to go over here. And then let's mess around with gravity. So if we want gravity to go the other way or to reduce gravity to nothing, you can actually have those come out and then they don't fall. And I think you can see now they're just kind of going out from the center point. Let me increase the birth rate again. 
and let's make them not live very long. So I think that blob was pretty fun. Right, so now it's not falling anywhere. It's just sort of disappearing at the edges. Um, I think there's an opportunity to do something that may look a little bit like fire in a particular way on some of these edges, especially if I move this to a particular edge and cropped it in a certain way, maybe increase the, the size or resistance of this. That's much more of a forming of a blob. So maybe that's not the right one. Can make it a little bit spikier, maybe. We need to die faster. Well, it looks amorphous and very fun. Put that back in the center. Oops. Okay. So gravity, I think, can also go the opposite direction. So if you wanted it to sort of fall up or float, that's also an option. Um, and let's get this to be very short. A lot of blob. Goes really fast. And then animate that a long time. I think there's some fun opportunity here. Um, and this is just one of the features. And you know, I've applied it to a solid blue object that has no other motion applied. So in combination, I think there's a lot of opportunity. And I'll give you guys some time to play around with this too. So yeah, lots of ways. I'm not sure I remember exactly what extra does. It's been a while. See twirly. Let's see. Let's make it last a little bit longer so we can see what's going on. Sort of coming out at a little bit of an angle. See that little bit of spin there? I reduce this a little bit, make it a little bit slower. A little bit of twist there. Oh, there's a fire option even. Ooh, here we go. Nice, and let's get this to go other way. Let's see, let's pick that down. It's a little bit more fire-like in the, at least the, the undulation direction underneath on the bottom. Looks a little bit better. Whoa. Cool. Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but all right. A lot of fun stuff you can play around with. Yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of coming from the center point and moving down. This is great. A lot of opportunity to do like a smoke effect or a flame effect from a jet there. You just want them to come out, sort of disappear. All right, and then birth size, right? How big do you want those blobs to be? I mean, that is pretty fun right there. This is kind of a nice little piece. If I were to rotate this maybe, 180 degrees the other direction. This is almost like it's very stylized illustrated flame. Change the color. Oops. To be red, some kind of orange. Since this doesn't die very fast. Almost like a uh, stylized spotlight. Through water or something. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to keep playing with this kind of direction here, and then let's look at lighting real quick, and then I'm going to give you guys time to play around with this. All right, so under lighting, there's a lot of different options, and there is a global lighting feature within After Effects, so you can choose that as well. But what kind of light you want it to have can be changed here. 
So there's an option to sort of like change some of those lighting effects that are going to give it a lot more of a glow. If that's something you want, you can choose the light color. In which case, you know, if I want to get this kind of like nice purpley thing, I'm going to add blue and red together. I mean, that is kind of cool. Is it a distant light or a point of light? And then in which case, if you choose point of light, you can choose where it is. So where do you want that kind of light reflection to be? And this is a lot of fun to mess around with. And we can make it a little bit higher up, intensify it a little bit. And again, these are stop watchable items. So if you want something to sort of like swing in a light effect around this, you can create a lot of visual interest with this sort of thing. And like, if you think about music, there's some fun there. I think there's a lot of opportunity. Again, light position can be animated. So, I mean, you can set that up. I'm gonna get a little like, I don't know, single eye monster character kind of like nodding his head or something. You could do that with light. That'd be kind of fun. Look like his hair is glowing the little flame, little flame buddy. Shading is exactly the same. And there's a lot of opportunity within this as well. So like what kind of shading do you want it to have? Deeper, darker, do you want to diffuse those shades? Settle it a little bit. There's kind of a roughness. Now we're getting into a little bit more of a space where you can have quite a lot of fun with this. I'm not really sure I understand metal, to be honest. It looks more metal when it's turned down maybe. And material opacity. So if you want to use it on something, another object shape. And that's kind of cool. A lot of fun with this. Um, now, the reason I show you these things, this lighting set, um, the birth rate, death rate, a lot of these kind of gravity and resistance, extra velocity, the direction, the X and Y radius of the producer, the producer for sure. A lot of these features that are in this effect simulation use the similar, these CC ones, there's just Creative Cloud, I guess Adobe's branding their stuff. Um, anything within this sort of simulation section uses a lot of the same controls. And I think that is something that is pretty consistent. I have in no way used all of these, but as a sort of formula for the way that these are composed, a lot of the distortion section is going to have a lot of the same kinds of features that you can edit and change within that effect section. So when you start understanding that these are things that you can dive into based on um, a particular area that you're interested in exploring, um, you don't always have to rely on, you know, a YouTube video to be able to add, you know, snow or something or starburst or whatever it is to be able to direct you to these kinds of sections. And I want to give you guys the, I don't know, permission, the power to be able to come in here and sort of say, okay, well, let me see what noise and grain can do. And then you know that anything that you put into this noise and grain section, you know, turbulent noise is going to be stackable with any other effects you know that a lot of the features, the evolution is a very common one with this, that you want something to sort of like change over time and to animate it over time, you're going to get a lot of these pretty cool like effects that you can add in there. Um, and so I want to just sort of like show that you can, you can do that, you know, which is pretty fun. Um, so yeah, you can stack these things. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording there. Have some Q&A and we'll try it out. How do I do that? Pause.